We're talking about directly in colour. First off, colour is intangible. In fact, colour, as we see it, does not even exist. It's only how we humans perceive different levels of radiation. One thing that you have to learn is, is that your eye and the lens might be looking at the same thing, but they are not perceiving it the same. Because your eyes have one thing that the lens does not have, a brain. We're in the exact same room, but everything's gone yellow. This is what the camera is really seeing. In fact, it's what your eyes are really seeing, but your brain plays tricks on you. Can you press the white balance for me? And there we go. How do we direct colour? Well, the first thing that we're going to need is a palette. Now, a palette is a number of colours that you use to set the tone of a scene. It's mostly used in animation. For example, the Hunchback, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, where he's inside Notre Dame, and it's all grey, stone, cold. When he's outside in the festival, bright, really beautiful sunlit vistas. That's the kind of thing that you want. And it's not just in animation. All directors who use colour film, which is quite a fair few, need to understand the language of colour. Directors like Steven Spielberg with, you know, um, Schindler's List. Or <coughs> American Beauty. Because American Beauty was one of those kind of films where red was a really, really... It was a colour integral to the actual story. It promoted lust, it promoted love, and it promoted a bit of danger. And the thing was, it appears everywhere. Colour as a palette appears everywhere. It appears, you know, on stock signs in real life. It talks about the heart, and it's not just red. Every single colour has a meaning, and it is that language of colour that we want to focus on in Final Cut. We will take you to right now, and we'll show you how to play around with actually this particular scene. Okay? See you there.
How do we use that? How do we direct it? Well, the answer is quite simple. We need a palette because every single colour invokes an emotional response from someone. It's just the same as sound. I mean, take things like Schindler's List with the... Re oh! American Beauty. Well, because that kind of need film is, is a everything to do with the palette. Is it's when basically you know a set of colours that you use to set the tone. As you Usually say, we describe these in animation. A palette, for example, red. You know, the hunchback of Notre Dame. When he's in the party, cathedral, it's all grey. Red in when he's outside, danger, beautiful blue, blue white, white skies, skies, stop signs, fantastic silhouette vistas. When you put it into film, it can mean many, many different things. Okay. And so we're going to go back to Final Cut, and we're going to show you how to play around with it. When we think of colour, we think of animation. But remember that every director since, you know, the late 1940s has been using colour film. So, what we need to think about is... When we talk about directing colour, we want... End sentence, begin anew, three. So how do we direct colour? Well, the first thing that we're going to need is a palette. Not a real one, obviously, of paint, but they are used in animation because what you want to do is set a tone. Pick a few colours. For example, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, um, when he was inside the castle, the palace, the, the cathedral, the I'm going to start that again. Yeah, okay. No, you're doing fine. Yeah, yeah. Fine. All right, just count me. What's up? <laughs> Harry's back again. What's happening? Did you just have a look? I'm arriving. All right. Hey, hey. Listen. I'm, I'm, I put these on. And then pull. <laughs> 